evening we got full night tonight. I will tell you now and I'll put it up at the top. Oh well, that's just that one, sorry, not that one. But it is that one, but just a small one. Trigger warning. And that will stay up there the whole show, the whole live. Because in one of the videos, you live, like the, one of the videos I want to show you, it's a very sensitive subject. And I will be using a lot of cozy words today because otherwise this will not ever get released. Right. Now, quite a few interviews have come out in the past day or so. One was from Nancy Grace. But what she did, in, normally she does the podcast, she'll release the podcast first. And then about two hours later, she'll release the, the interview, the YouTube interview. What she's done is she's released the podcast, but then only gave us clips, like three different clips, sections of the interview with Seth, Seth Rogers, Sebastian's father. But all three are very telling, very telling. And one of them is, you probably guessed, we knew he wouldn't take a polygraph. We knew it. We knew Chris to be, I'm all the black, all the black and white, get the information out there, you come with me at the hard questions. I don't care. Right? Chicken out of doing a polygraph. That Nancy Grace and her team had uh, arranged for him. She'd even arranged it to go to where he like where he is in Mississippi to have it done there, so that he wouldn't have to go out of his way. But no, he's a chicken, he backed out, but then again we knew he would, we knew he would, right, apparently he turned around and said the FB or TBI have told him not to do the polygraph, um, I don't know what planet I'm on but I'm quite sure the TBI or FBI or even the sheriff's office wouldn't tell you to do, not to do it. If someone says, will you do a polygraph, if it isn't the police or whatever, or TBI or FBI, and someone like Nancy Grace says, would you be willing to take a polygraph? And she arranged it. I cannot see any of those three organisations, law, law enforcement, telling you, you can't do it. Because, yes, you've got a right not to do it. That's your right. But why sit there on Nancy, well, well, he did sit there on Nancy Grace's show and lie. He lied all the way through Nancy Grace's show. But why sit there and say, Time and place, I'll be there. You know what I mean? Now, she's arranged for Seth to take one. He'll take it. It's arranged for next Wednesday. He'll take it. Because he's got nothing to hide. <coughs> nothing. Hi, MG. Okay, hope everything's okay with your mum. Anyway, so we're going to watch those 
three little clips first. That's just the kind, that's just a taster of what is to come. And believe me, I was, I was heartbroken. Heartbroken, and I mean it. When I heard what was said by Seth on the very last live that we're going to watch. Right? And in a way, and I was, uh, I was a bit surprised by the way he reacted to that. But then again, I'm not surprised. Oh, uh, right, okay. Right. Well, I tell her to keep smiling. I like her smile, MG. Tell your mum to keep smiling. Anyway, so, um, what was I saying now? I've lost all track. Anyway, as I said, it didn't take the polygraph. We knew it wouldn't. We should have messaged Nancy Grace during the show. He won't take it, Nancy. Don't set it up. He's not going to take it. Right? And then I was also hearing things about the mother, if you can call her that. Right? Have now moved down to Mississippi. The house is not up for sale. It's not up for sale. But she's moved down there now. I think it's because when she came back last time, TBI called her and Seth into the offices. Remember when they had that meeting in TBI? He wasn't there, was he? He was down in Mississippi working. So he wasn't there. And he doesn't like not being there because he's got no control. Mm -hmm. Right? And then today we've had, I've seen a post about his sister, Mel, is it Melissa? Complaining about people having a go at her and all this like that. It's not her fault. A 15 year old went missing. When I read that, I thought, is she serious? Is this whole flipping family for real? You've got a mother and a stepfather who keep spouting, oh, TBI and the police have told us not to do any searches. Well, stuff that. That's my child. I'll be out there. Seth's out there. Seth, the father, is out there. I will be there. Right? And um, I suppose uh, the reason she's used to going down to Mississippi is because it's to take the attention off that area by people coming round and driving past the house and everything. But I'm sorry, but it's not YouTubers. YouTubers aren't doing that. Because if it's YouTubers, they'd be up on their channel showing us. They haven't done anything like that now for, oh, a week or so. I think it was when, the last time was when, I believe Dolly Vision was down there. And he got a bit of aggro as well. Right? Same as JLR. But, um, I've also heard, I'm not sure, but they're doing a search in Alaska. Because two days, I think it was two days after Sebastian went missing, they went to Alaska for a couple of days. And they drove there. And someone once said, the only reason you drive to Alaska, from Tennessee, where they are, to Alaska, well, is if you've got goods, something you can't take on the plane. Right? So I've also heard there is a way to beat the border. 
get past that border from Canada to Alaska. You go across a ferry and it bypasses that border. So they've gone in the car, possibly gone on the ferry, we're not sure, but they've gone over to Alaska for his works, apparently. Now, what is it about that family where the wives all have to follow their husbands to work? You know what I mean? Hmm. Why? I never followed my husband to work. I couldn't wait for him to go to work. <laughs> well, I really couldn't. I used to look forward to him coming home. But God, I didn't, couldn't wait for him to go to work. So there's no way I'd be going, I know what, I'll come with you to your works today. I can know some women who, whose husbands do a lot of um, long distance driving, like big lorries, HGV lorries and things like that. If they're working, if they've got to do some work deliveries on the weekend, they might go with them on the odd weekend. I know they do. It's just something about this family. Chris goes to work, so what does Katie do? Follow him down there. Uh, Christopher, Mo Christ Christopher Proudfoot's mother, her husband goes to work. So what does she do? She follows him with him. She goes with him. Hmm. And something else I noticed as well, Christopher Proudfoot is so uh, controlling and I'm going to put a picture up of Sebastian rather than have me there. Oh, got the wrong one up. Put that one back. There's a picture of Sebastian. There. there. Right. So, she put in this little note today on this, I don't know what page it was, but someone shared it to one of the Facebook pages. And as you read it, it was all, oh, poor you, poor Melissa. That's how you felt. Oh my God, such a shame for Melissa. Because it was all oh, me, 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 me. What is Christopher like? Me, 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 me. What's it must be something in that family. It must be. It must all be narcissistic, controlling, evil. I don't, I don't even say the other word because I would get kicked off YouTube completely if I did. Anyway. So, we're going to look first interview you've probably all seen this interview but it's only it's literally seconds 50 seconds or two minutes long at the most right and i've got them all on my facebook page so i'm gonna have to keep searching the web the internet i mean And this is the first one of them. I don't know if it's the first part of the interview we don't or what. Uh, let's get my screen yard. I'll tell you though, the one video we watched today, I watched today, I had to put my headphones on. Because my grandson was there. I couldn't let him hear that. Right. So this is the first interview. Back to Seth Roger. Seth, I have so many questions for you that we're running out of our time together for today. But I want to ask you this. Go on. I was listening to a statement of one of Mr. Proudfoot's wives, I 
believe there have been five. I'm not judging. I don't care who marries who or doesn't marry who. But this particular one named Nina stated that they had two children, one she had from a prior relationship, the second she had with him, and that the daughter had braces and he hit the daughter in the mouth and busted her mouth. Guys, remember, Mr. Proudfoot nor the mother have been named a suspect or a POI in this case. My question to you, Seth, did you know about any of that? I mean, she's on tape saying it. I watched her say it. Did you have any idea that there may have been other issues of violence with children? No, ma'am, I didn't. And I know that Chris has been in Sebastian's life for a while now, before me and Katie were divorced. So I... <sighs> has Sebastian ever said to you or tried to communicate to you abuse in the home? No. He's, he's on he? multiple occasions sit there and was has told me he doesn't want to go back. And I've asked him, why don't you want to go back? And he won't, he wouldn't tell me. He didn't say why. He was just like, I just, I just don't want to go back. And it's, you know, at that point in time, I'm, I'm just like, okay, well, maybe it's the freedom that he gets at my house. And he's a teenager. And now I'm finding right. out a lot of this stuff. And it's, I wish he had told me. Nancy, if I can jump in for just a second there. Hi. That was the first interview. And all the links are in the description. I guess we're behind the story where we kind of take a deep dive in some of, yeah. into some of the big stories that we've been covering. And this offers us an Right, that was the first one. And now the second one. Let's have a look. Take that one down. So it's sort of like told his dad, like, he didn't want to go home, but like his dad said, he just thought it because he's a bit more relaxed with him there, right? And things like that. He never for one minute thought there was anything like that going on. And how would he? He's a father, not a mind reader. You know what I mean? I think people put a lot too much on parents to you should you should have picked up on those signs. What signs? What signs are we supposed to look for as parents? Hmm? Anyway, so that was the first one. As I said, they're not very long, very short. This is the next one, hold on. Mm -hmm. Hold on, just trying to make sure. No, it is not there, is it? But like I said, all the links are in the description. So anyone watching on Catch Up, Replay, Please, the links are all in this description. Will be in the description. And um, so you can watch them yourself if you need to. But these little ones, I'm not going to interrupt them. They're only like two minutes long. That's someone is also trying to sabotage your search for your own son what's happening somebody doesn't want me to find my son they have been telling there's things have been coming in off the internet that i need to stop searching for him i've had people following me around since and since i would say day nine day ten people have been following me around once i started getting volunteers to help me they started following around my volunteers, trying to be an intimidative factor. And now I found out that not only that, but 
they're going back to where we've already flyered and they're taking the flyers down. Okay. I, I don't know what to make of this. Brian Trasher is the vice president of the United Cajun Navy. Okay. And there have been many incarnations of the Cajun Navy, but this is what I know. This group is out searching for Sebastian. They called off part of the search because they perceived threats. Now the bio dad, Seth, is telling me that flyers have been torn down for Sebastian. I, I, I don't understand that. What's happening, Brian? Yeah, I mean, uh, as you heard us say in the past, you, you now heard Sebastian's father, Seth, say that there are without out question people in the local community uh, whether the locals or not remains to be seen but there are people there in Sumner County that do not want this boy found and they want people uh, who are searching for him to stop and they resorted to threats to try to make them stop uh, fortunately it hasn't worked because uh, we still have people out there looking and I know Seth is not going to stop looking uh, for his son right so that was the second one yeah Look. Put it back up there. It's been more than a month since your son went missing. How are you feeling today? Same as I was yesterday. Um, just continuing the search. Continue looking. I'm not going to get it. What have I got that one for? Um, get back here. Now we go to the last one, the last clip of Mr. Sebastian, uh, with Seth Rogers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Keep pausing it and it keeps coming up, pause. And if this keeps moving from up the top, I'm going to lose it big time. All right, so. Hi, oh, Dad. Sebastian, uh, Seth, I don't understand that because he told me me he would take a polygraph if i set it up i set it up i went through a lot of hoops to get it set up one convenient to him in the area where he says he's working then he wouldn't take it and blames the tbi so now i find out he sold other outlets he's taken one and passed do you know the truth i don't i really don't know but i'll tell you what i volunteered to take polygraph I was told that I wasn't, I didn't need to, because they have my location and whereabouts, but I still volunteered. And if somebody wants me to take one, that's something of my own free will. I haven't been told by TBI that I can't take one. So, that last one was no surprise. We knew he wouldn't take that polygraph. We knew it. He doesn't have to. That's his right. But why say, time and place, I'll be there. You know what I mean? Why say that I'm alive with Nancy Grace? Because you know Nancy Grace sets up these polygraphs. She does it all the time with a lot of people. She's got the connections to do that. Right, so Nancy Grace should have listened to us. We could have told her before the interview. He wouldn't take a polygraph. Katie took one, and apparently she's passed. But I do know. Well, I don't know, but I can't see someone coming out and saying you passed. Right, because wouldn't that give you a, a piece of paper, like a, a piece of paper saying you've done this polygraph and you 
everything. You know what I mean? Just as proof that you have passed. Because for all we know, she could have just been a bit deviant on one or two questions. So they're telling her, yeah, you passed. But they know, no, because of those quest answers she gave on those questions, where she's maybe being a bit deviant. I'm not saying she was. I'm just saying she could have been. They know then where to focus their attention on. Right? And this polygraph was done before, I've, I believe that was done before the, um, the investigation started, I think. Don't quote me on that, I think. Right, so they are just the time, they're just the starters. Those three little interviews were just the starter of what to come. All right, now, hold on, I just gotta get a drink. Hold on. Because my throat still isn't perfect, and talking doesn't help. Anyway, so next one. God sake. Next one is is it this one? Yeah. What I'll do, I'll be only showing you clips of this one because it's like an hour long. Plus, I don't want to get done for copywriting. So, if I just do clips of it, I'm safe. This is Vinnie Colton, and it's Court TV. Right, and it's we heard uh, from investigators from uh, the sheriff, FBI, and one day after they addressed the public to kind of give an update on what's going on, now a re renewed search that could take a couple of days. That's good news, not great news. It's good news. You've got to keep the search going. You've got to keep his face out there. You've got to keep a spotlight on, on what is happening here because we don't know what happened. Nobody knows. Well, somebody might know, but investigators don't know. We Oh, someone knows. Someone definitely knows. Right? Because that's, I believe that somebody knows is the one who won't take the polygraph. <laughs> Got my phone pinging galore. Who's pinging me? Hold on, I'll be just checking this. Someone pinging me. No, that's the wrong one. Hmm. I just opposed on this one clip. But it's just a short clip, but that clip is in the video that we will be watching. Right? So let's 
continue. We don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Which leaves open like any possibility here. So it's good that the search is continuing. More importantly, remember his face. Um, a question, another question people are asking tonight is like, where's mom? Where, where's mom? And a lot of people have been talking about that, but it's, it's, it's a difficult position for any parent to be in in what has happened here. Now, I can tell you where dad... Yes, it's a difficult position for any parent. I wouldn't want to be in that position. But I wouldn't be up and leaving my home. Dad sat in an interview and said, the door is always open for him to walk through there again. The doors aren't open. The doors are well and truly bolted because she's bolted back down to Mississippi. And they come, well, he could be anywhere. He could be on the moon, love. But you wouldn't know because you're not up and looking. Okay, you've got a, a watching out on the side of your car, a, a poster thing on the side of your car. I'd have them on my back windows, on my two side windows, on the passengers, back passenger windows. I'd have them literally over every window I could on my car. So from whatever angle they saw me from left or from right or from the back, they saw his face. I will not be leaving my home. It's a bit like another case I know where a couple said, we're not leaving here until we until we get our daughter back. But as soon as the police focused their attention onto them, they got in a car, scuttled off to the airport and flew back home. Yeah. A bit like you. You got in your car and scuttled off down to Mississippi. I just wish Sebastian had opened up to his mom, his dad. But I think the reason is because any child doesn't matter whether that child, that mother abuses child or not, right? That child will love. All he gave was unconditional love, and that's all he ever wanted back was unconditional love. And I couldn't even give him that. Now, someone said today, compare them between Don Wells and Candice. Well, I'm sorry, but no one can beat Don and Candice. They're running a very, they're running a close second, but they are second. Running close first at the moment to John and Candice Brown. But at least they've got a decent home for them to live in where John and Candice, their home was a rat infested hut. You know what I mean? No doors on the bathroom. Food all over the floors. Food, floors are filthy. So, I give them that, like they have a nice clean home. That's the only thing I will give them. Anyway, let's continue. Your feed. He's looking for my son. Your feed just froze up for a second. I'm so sorry, Seth. So, we, we didn't. How are you holding up tonight? I'm just looking for my son. There is no holding up. It's just moving forward. Move forward to the next location. Move forward to the next. Anything that I get, any type of lead, any type of anything. I mean, it's just every day holding on to hope. What are your thoughts about the investigation and the status of the law enforcement investigation into the search for your son where 
Um, they're not ruling anything out. No evidence of foul play. Do you think that they have found anything so far in, in more than a month? I'm not part of the investigation, and they don't have to let me know anything. They let me know anything. Um, not letting you know anything is, is, is one part. Uh, the other part is you're his dad, right? So has that communication been enough to, to ha have you feel like, okay, I, I know and I trust that they're, they're working this thing? I'm in law enforcement myself, so I've got to trust, trust the procedure. I got to trust that if everything is followed by the procedure, and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, that there'll be a positive outcome and my son will be found. I just... I think they made a big, big error. Something about Tennessee, right? Now, I, I was watching a program ages ago, and it's about detective you know this guy in, in America, in USA. And this guy said, then he goes to any scene, right? Any scene, missing child, whatever. He'll look on it as a murder, like work from the top down, murder. Cross all the, cross all that off, you know, you know. So they have the forensic scene, getting swabs took on this and swabs took on that, getting it. Getting any uh, possible areas where blood could have been spilt, you know what I mean? Getting all that clicked up. That all comes up negative. Then they go down and think, well, could it be a kidnapping? Right? And I look at all the possible things of a kidnapping. Right? Abduction, anything like that. And then, if that clears, and the first one clears, we've got no, no signs of any uh, misdemeanors or anything, and no sign of uh, abduction or kidnapping, then the next thing is, yeah, okay, this child has got up and walked out the house on their own. But they didn't do that. They took the parents' words. It's like they did the same with um, Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. They took the parents' words. She was abducted. But the care team, or whatever they call them, come back and said, there's no evidence of an abduction. But I'll give it to them, the parents. They stuck to their guns. They said, no, she was abducted. They stuck to a good inch down, they'll say the same. But we know she wasn't. We know she wasn't. There's no signs of anything. Christ, that's where they lived. They lived up on a hill. And there's like, how many dogs? 15? 10? 15 dogs? Okay. And you're telling me someone come up on that hill, took a little girl and got off that hill without one dog barking. And one of the dogs was in the, like, this little undercover building, a little, like a little crawl space, because she got her puppies there. Now, if someone had come up on that land, she'd have been barking to protect her puppies. You know what I mean? So we know there was no abduction there. But for them, and for them to say, he walked, go up and walked out the house. Right. He's autistic. Autistic children like routine. Something really bad must have happened for him to just walk, go up and walk out. But saying that, I can't see him getting up and walking out without taking his phone. Some money, a coat, his shoes, 
and maybe some snacks in a bag to keep him going. But none of that was took. He didn't have his shoes on, he didn't have his phone, he didn't take no money, he didn't take a bag with snacks in, he didn't have a coat. He just up and walked out. Poof, he's gone. Because the dogs had no scent of him around that house. None. They had no video of him outside that house on the Sunday night. The neighbour across the road said, someone put the bins out, but it's not clear who it is. Now, I think you'd be able to tell if it was Katie or Sebastian, just by their own size and the build of them, you know what I mean? But it wasn't clear. It was too dark for them to pick anything up clearly. And the last sighting of Sebastian was when he left the, where was he? The Texas Roadhouse. They got him on video walking out the Texas Roadhouse towards the car. That is the last sighting they have of Sebastian. They have no other sightings. So did something happen between Texas Roadhouse and coming home? Because I don't think he came home. Or if he did, something happened in that house shortly after he got there. Because there's no sign of him outside of that house at all. And that dog that you hear on that audio, which I played the other night, Max, I think, that was a false False, false. It was a pick up by a dog. He picked up a scent, but it wasn't Sebastian. He picked up another scent. Right, so, or something like that. But it was a false positive. And Chris knew that. Seth, Seth knew it was a false positive. He was told by TBR it was a false positive. Chris and Katie were told it was a false positive. But in that interview they did with Nancy Grace, they sat there as a butter wouldn't mount in their mouth, mouth and said, yes, a dog hit on his seat. So, and then we had that interview by the police. Right, the press release by the police. They have no evidence of, a, what was he? A criminal or cotton. But they've got no evidence that anything had gone wrong, had gone wrong. What more evidence do you want? There's no scent of that child outside of that house, not around it. Not anywhere. Not in the house, yes, but not outside. Now, for a lad that you will take the rubbish out on a Sunday night, apparently he took the rubbish out Sunday night, would his scent not be on the driveway? Right? Um, what else? I don't know. What about Saturday? Did he not go out anywhere at all Saturday? Would you think not have been around the house Saturday? From Saturday? Dogs can go up to seven days, can track up to seven days after on a scent. So how much more? Apart from finding a body, how much more do you need? You found glasses, which, okay, you've said, I'm not anything to do with Sebastian, right? But it's a bit coincidental. These glasses were found, what, walking distance from the grandparents' house? Hmm, a bit coincidental. And then, I don't know how true this was, but there's rumour of bag, plastic bags in the van of her car with blood on or something. I don't know. 
If that was the case, I think they'd have arrested her there and then. Right, but something happened either coming home from the roadhouse or once they got home because she would drive straight into the garage and then you'd get out of the car and go in the house. So something happened from driving from Texas Roadhouse home or I don't know. But whatever they've done, they made the mistake. If they've got rid of his body, something happened and they did get rid of his body. They made one fatal mistake. They should have left his shoes with him. Because his dad knows he would not leave any house without shoes on because of an incident he had when he was a child with what are they called? Fire ants? I think they're called red ants here in the UK. I'm not sure. His dad knows this. The mother knows that. Well, she should do. Right? So that was a mistake by not leaving his shoes, taking his shoes with him. Big mistake. Right? I can probably say, okay, there's no sense of him outside because he never went outside. He was always in the house playing his video games. That they could probably get away with. But not likely. Because somewhere along that lawyer, that way, he had to go outside somewhere to get the post, maybe. To take the rubbish out. That was his chore, one of his jobs he had to do. I had trouble getting my kids to put the rubbish in the bin, never alone, take it out. Anyway, we will continue. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. They haven't came up with anything. Why they're not asking for for higher powers to help? From where? I want to go back to when you first found out, and then this part isn't clear in my head. Where were you when when you found out that Sebastian? Um, was missing and, and who called you? What was that conversation like? And then sort of what happened next there? Made it out to the parking garage. When I got in my vehicle, I saw I had a missed call and a text message. Christopher Proudfoot. Text message was nine, it was a 911. So I called immediately and He's the one that told me that Sebastian was missing. And how much detail did he give you about what happened? And how would you describe that that moment, that call? Wasn't much detail except for Sebastian. Except for he said, Katie woke up, Sebastian's missing. So I left the parking garage and headed straight to her house. And and how far are you from the house? About 45 minutes from downtown correction center to their house in Henderson, Sumner County. Okay, so now you respond. You're um, on that 45 minute ride there. Um, are you talking to anyone or are you just pedal to the metal trying to get there? No, I'm trying not to get a speeding ticket. I, I get that, but I mean, are you just focused on getting there or are you calling um, yeah. his mom uh, to get more details? No, I'm just focusing on traffic to get there as fast as possible. So now when you got there, um, what happened at that moment? Like, did did, did you have a conversation with, with, with his mom? And did you guys, did you try to find out like, well, what the situation was here? When I got there, there was already law enforcement presence there. 
Um, so I walked in and just started listening to what was going on. And I wanted to hear what was going on. So I got to hear her telling law enforcement, law enforcement asking questions, me listening to the questions from his mother. And what did you form the opinion based upon what you were hearing? I knew my son was missing. And I just started watching what you listen to the words coming out. That I have an opinion. Yeah. I formed an opinion. I am only human. And what was that opinion? That again, once again, my son. Something has happened to my son under her watch. This is the first time. And once again. She wasn't being an adult. She wasn't being a parent taking care of an autistic child. So, as you're listening and watching her, now that we're home at that time? When I got, yes, because when I got there, it was just Katie, and I think his. I think Chris's mom was there, but it was just when it was just Katie and Sebastian at the house, from my understanding. Now, I've got to imagine your mind is racing at the at the time you're hearing all this information. So, as you're hearing the information from Katie, and from what you're telling me, it seems like you're a little upset in how things were handled. So what, what happened next? Um, where did you go? Um, where did she go? What did police do at that, at that time? Cause this is very early on, right? This is the morning of. They started asking me questions on where I'd been. I told them I'd been at work since I've been walked in since I've been at work in the, in the parking garage since about six o'clock the night before. And I told him they can call and verify where I've been at. And I just sat there and started listening. Just listening to everything that was being said. Now, did you have any reason to believe that there was there were any problems in that home? Katie was pretty adamant about having a good weekend which meant my son wasn't misbehaving in her point of view. So I'm trying to read between the lines here. Do you believe that she doesn't exercise enough patience with, with Sebastian and that causes some problems in the, in, in the home or she doesn't approach her, her, mute sorry i was on mute i think he's just seeing what we've seen now we've seen it from the beginning where his concentration was on out there looking for sebastian right he wasn't think he wasn't thinking of youtube channels and all this lot he wasn't and i think it's only been in the past what for three four weeks he has um, started watching these 
and he's seeing it all going on and he picks up on something as well right uh you know that last interview they did with that one youtuber okay where she was in their home right i said this why did she look at him well she looked at him yeah just me mg because i really hope he's found alive i really do i hope they have just got him somewhere he did right but i don't think that is the case i really don't so anyway but he's just had enough he's had enough and he's had enough of being the good guy sticking up for her and not saying anything bad about the mother and this is still very tight this is still very tight if you watch that um, video that link i showed you earlier mg this one is still tame compared to that one. Responsibilities as a parent appropriately? Like there's there's something wrong. Autistic there. children take a different well, autistic children take they it's a different aspect when you're when you're a parent of an autistic child. Um, you don't really get much freedom. Because you're, you have to set a routine and you have to go abide by it. And when she's sitting there telling me she put me to bed at nine o'clock the night before or nine thirty the night before, and then you know she heard him in there and told him to go to bed and things like that, it's like there's not much of a routine. And with there's no routine then yeah. autistic children don't act the same way they're supposed to when i've had him there's a routine in my house when i have him and he he's a he's a teenager you know you're gonna listen you're gonna hear some some back talk probably i mean they're growing they're going to rebel some sort of some way they're teenagers you know so you're going to listen to it. You're going to have to deal with it. But you still got to remember that you're a parent. And you, you have to adjust your lifestyle to be able to make sure that they can adjust and learn and still grow. And you can't, you can't do some of the things that, that I've seen her do in the past so so the 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 custody arrangement it seems you, you both have custody and, and he'll spend time with you as well as with his mom were there any any indication um in, in your communications with katie that like right we know what the custody was but more comes out about that right now just to read that this is what some some your county sheriff's office important announcement. We want to clarify that the eyeglasses recently found are not related to Sebastian Rogers. The search operation planned for today has been in the works for several days, which I can quite understand that because there's a lot of search different organisations there. So they've got a range for one for all of these different organisations to come in. Right. So, but why can I just say that on the on that press release? Right. Let's get to here. Um. They were busy. I fly down. A deputy sheriff I saw by our volunteer area and turned around and had him wait. And I told them to put on gloves, bag them, tag them, bring them back so I could give them to the deputy sheriff that was there so that we could fill out the evidence and have a chain of evidence. And when you saw the glasses, do you agree with this, that they, they, they couldn't be Sebastian's? They were, they were very similar to Sebastian's it's been it's been a month and a half think? 
since I've seen my son. So, you know, it's a month and a Do you think those glasses could have been a decoy? Because it's a bit strange. These glasses were found literally walking distance from the grandparents. And now they're going up to Alaska to do a search. I think those glasses may have been a decoy, a red herring. What happens since I've seen his glasses? They looked really, really similar to the point that I didn't want to lose a chance that these might be evidence. So I gave them to the sheriff's department to log as evidence. I want to play for you. Um... Uh, Katie, who spoke uh, on YouTube to the Chronicles of Olivia, uh, describing that morning and the night before. And I want to get your uh, reaction to what she says happened in, in, in the house and where they were. Let's watch. We went and picked up our niece yesterday. Yeah, I got a call and. Um, Asked if I could go and pick her up, and I did. And so um, we went to that. We went to BJ's. Um, had a good time there. He ate a colossal popcorn. Um, came home to put groceries away because we got snacks because, you know, he's 15 and snacks. Um, we went to the bowling alley. And then from there, we went to dinner, came home. Um, he took out the trash, because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. About 9 o'clock, told him to go to bed. He was come out of his room where he was playing, and he said, all right, good night, Mama, good night, puppies, love you. He went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. And um, six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning. And that's when he went in here. Seth, you know Katie better than all of us, obviously. You you know your son so well. Um, does that story, is there anything in that story that doesn't make sense to you? The inconsistencies, from what I've heard before, it, none of it makes sense. Think, things aren't, you know... I'm not here to sling mud, but why is she asking Chris to verify what she did on Sunday when Chris wasn't here on Sunday? Boom. We said that from day one. From day one. And, oh, actually, there's a little clip I want to show has anyone ever heard of what they call Jeepers Smile? Jeepers Smile or something like that? It's where they give a little smile out like, when they're not supposed to be giving a smile. But they give that little smile out. Like, both she and he did it in the first interview. And I'll pull that first interview up at the end after this. I just remembered that. 
But hers is very, very slight. You've got to watch it. And I'll actually slow it down when, it, when I put that one on. Because it's very, very slight, but it's like a little... You know when she's... When the first doing that interview, and she's got her tissues up at her eyes, and she turns around, to the interviewer asks her a, a question about how she's, how she's coping or something like this. And she's got the tissue up at her eyes. And as she turns, she turns towards Chris. And you see this like, little smile come on her face. Jupiter's delight. Jupiter's, Jupiter's delight. That's it. She's got like this little smirk come up on her face. I'm going to shoot you. Right, but not on this now because this is another interview. Hold on. That is such or the fact that she said that on another interview and didn't bother to check on our son. You know, there's a difference between some some noise or a thump. I mean, just the information that I receive from watching any of their podcasts don't make sense. Um, so please uh, stay with us. I'll have a few more questions, and I want to make sure um everyone why we're doing this because there is a boy who is missing here's a did your help and and sebastian needs your help so um seth is going to stay with us um we've got more with him plus coming up in the next app bowling brook illinois potentially huge break in a huge true crime mystery Savvy. Um, I can't find him, and he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son. That's Katie Proudfoot describing what she says is the moment that she realized that her son, Sebastian Rogers, was missing. Um, Sebastian's dad, Seth Rogers, is still with us um, tonight. Seth, again, thank you. Um, is the last verifiable um, proof of, I guess, proof of life is, is one way to put it. I hate to say it like that, but the last like time that you can verify that someone outside of that home saw him or he was on video. It would have been Sunday leaving Texas Roadhouse. And what time was that about? About 6.30. And who, do, do you know everyone who was there at Roadhouse with Sebastian? All I In a minute, I'll have to just pause this video and leave you with some music because my grandson left his favorite teddy thing that he likes to go to sleep with on the night time. And my son is coming to pick it up. So I've got to nip it down. 14 floats down to the car, but that's when he texts me to let me know. But until then, I'm safe. I saw was as they left the building and got in the Katie's car, it was just her, her and Sebastian. And anything? Not that I could observe from what little I saw. And when they went to dinner and out that day, um, I think Katie's described being with other family members. Have any of them spoken to you? Have any of them joined in the searches? No. No? No. How about the immediate neighborhood? Um, have all the homes been searched? Have the, the, the people in that immediate uh, neighborhood all been cooperative? With From the my understanding, uh, a lot of them have cooperated with law enforcement and that they've given up their video cameras, footage to uh, Sumner County sheriffs and 
they've been pretty much cooperative in law enforcement. How about me personally? I haven't been in that neighborhood since the Wednesday afterwards. I've been around there. I've been to the beach high school, but as for going into that neighborhood, no, I've been next door to the construction area. I researched that. I searched it on the Tuesday after he left. And then I've been there a couple times to research it. I've been to Beach High School. I've been over to the fire station when they had him at the EMA Mobile Command Center there. Do, do you think it's possible that he could, that he would, because you know your son, that he would leave in the middle of the night, potentially barefoot, maybe with a flashlight? It doesn't seem like my son at all. He would never leave my house in the middle of the night barefoot. And if he did, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. You know, the only, we've left in the middle of the night. There's been times that we've gone fishing in the middle of the night. You know, we plan that sort of stuff. But him walking out the door in the middle of the night, no. It's not something he would do. It's something he's never done on me. Is there any chance, and I know there were Rel there were rules in place, but is there any chance that he could have been lured by someone either from school or, or somewhere else to like, hey, you know, we're doing something at night or we're going somewhere or we're going to meet up? Is, 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 is that, you think that's in the I realm of possibilities? That highly, I find that highly unlikely because my son doesn't really have a concept of days or how to, or, or time in order to plan something like that. What do you mean? Could you explain that? Well, trying to get him to wear a watch is already hard enough. You know, he's, I've had him set timers on his phone so that he remembers that, hey, it's seven o'clock at night. I need to take my medicine. I mean, he, he doesn't really have a concept of time except for you know, he's got to, when he gets woken up in the morning at his mom's, normally around six o'clock, he's got an hour to get up, get ready, eat his food, and be out there to catch the bus between 7.10 and 7.20. Then he goes to school. He gets out of school at three o'clock, and I normally call him about 3.30. But when he's here and it's a weekend or something, you know, there's not any, there's no time. You know, telling him at noon we're going to head out and go fishing and I'll sit there and watch. And he's all interested in going fishing. And I'll sit there and then he'll be like, he'll walk up to me. It's like one, two o'clock in the afternoon. He's like, I thought we were going fishing this morning. I was like, well, what time is it? And he'll run into the kitchen and look and be like, it's two o'clock. And it's like, oh, well, I thought we were going to do that this morning. And you needed to let me know when it, that was your thing. That That's what I talked to you about. You know, let's get everything ready at 11 o'clock so we can go fishing. And you've been playing with your toys. You know, playing on your video game, watching TV with me. It was like, well, I didn't realize what time it was. And it's like, okay, well, you know, we were supposed to do that this morning. Let's go ahead and get get it done now. You know, he didn't really have a concept at the time. Children, we've all just, and they don't have a concept of time. They don't. You know what I mean? It might be good with numbers. But they can have no concept of time. Anyway, just fast forward a little bit. Chris, 
Justin Gaming and Proudfoot are their own, they're adults. They're responsible for themselves. I'm Seth Rogers. I'm I'm looking for my son, Sebastian. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. I'm his dad. He's missing. I have to find him. It doesn't look like they're doing it, though. I, I, don't, I have to. I'll ask for people to come. If they don't, then I'll do it myself. I've always been like that. You know, you can't rely on people. Luckily enough, I, I'm finding people that I can rely on currently to help me find my son. And I appreciate everybody that is showing up. We've gotten people that have showed up from Ohio. We've gotten people that showed up from Missouri. I, we've got people that have come in from Florida. Everybody, we got people in, in the community that are showing up. They're upset and they're mad at how Chris and Katie are behaving in this, but they're human. I mean, when none of us are without fault, just I would think that parents would, would, should, would and should act different. Seth, thank you. I'm going to find you. I, I hear it in your voice. I, I see it in your eyes. I, our, our thoughts, our prayers are with you and Sebastian. Um, obviously, we're going to keep his picture uh, on the screen as much as we can, night after night. Uh, thank you so much, Seth. Um, good luck in the search, and and please try to make sure you take. I know you, you you don't worry about yourself, but please take care of yourself too as well, Seth. I will. I'll be around here long after I find Sebastian. All right. Yeah, that that man breaks my heart every time. And it's true what he's saying. His mum isn't looking. His stepfather isn't looking. None of their family are looking. So as a father, he's stepping up and doing what he needs to do, and that is to look for his son. You know what I mean? Because this is just... I've never heard of a case where a child's gone missing and as soon as they're putting up flyers or whatever, literally the next day or so, they're being took down again. So they've got to go back out again and put flyers up again. As soon as they put them up, they're being took down. You know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous. I've never heard of any people wanting to sabotage I mean, a search like they are, like this is being sabotaged. Right? So, it's just, I can't, I haven't even got the words for it, to be honest with you, not me. So, <clears throat> right, so this is the <coughs> I have got the podcast of Nancy Grace where we look at this where you'll hear the old interview but we'll look at that another time because that's like 45 minutes long I thought this was an interesting read, this. As officials continue to search, oh, yeah. Search for 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, the autistic Sumner County team who disappeared in February. Investigators say they're hopeful the boy might still be alive and his family has remained cooperative and communicated despite his mother and stepfather's recent move to Memphis. Um, does Memphis uh, 
is that a different obviously is that a different state yes to tennessee if so would they have would they have extra addition laws down there if it's a different state because that might be one reason I've gone down there. Oh, damn, I'm just going to give my son a call because for some reason, he should have been here uh, 10 minutes ago. So I'm just going to see if he's going to... Right, my son is on his way, but he's uh, just nipped into another store somewhere. Don't worry, keep me holding on. Anyway, this interview. Right. Hold on. I came across it because a clip of it was put on a Facebook a Facebook page, and I was just dumbfounded by what I heard and his whole demeanour. Oh my God! I've never seen him so mad. Because he was mad, he's angry, he's upset. You know, it's literally just all of it has come out in this interview. His feelings, everything. Right? Because people have been posting, like, I've been given the information about their divorce, but I wasn't going to post it. Not even on my Facebook page would I post it. Right? And then... I've seen the information from his side of the divorce. And I thought, that sounds more like it. You know what I mean? And I even said, in when I seen the photos, I said, has anyone gave it a thought? Because it was, this, photo, this photo is placed on her Facebook page as well with this information. Well, I said, has anyone ever thought perhaps the mother had done that to the son? right and then took photos of it and my dad the father done it right and um and from what you hear about what seth says how if you've read what he said and then what you're hearing out you'll see i think i was right i think those bruises came from someone else not the father. I cannot see Seth putting hands on that that lad. I really can't. Right, but my sign is up. Trigger warning. I will even put it along the bottom. Okay. This gets too much for anyone. Anyone watching on replay, please, if this is too much, just walk away. Walk away. The link will be in the description. So if ever you want to watch it personally yourself, 
where you beat at a time, then do that. Because this can be a bit too much and it is triggering. Oh, going fair van. Oh, going fair van. If you haven't already, if you're watching on replay, please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, ring the bell, comment and share. I really appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to go and watch this. Until my son. When my son gets there, I'll just put some music on. I'll stop the video and I'll put the music on for you to listen to. Right, just going a bit too far. Oh, oh God. Okay. Um, constant interviews, constant everything. Constant, constant something. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I don't wish it upon anybody. No, you're, what you're going through is a parent's absolute worst nightmare. Uh, before we get started, I don't think you need any introduction, obviously, but before we get started on questions and things like that about Sebastian, um, who this is really about, is there anything that you want to say to the people before we start? Thank you. Thank you all. Those that are helping me find my son, thank you. Hold on, I've just got to take a call. What's up? So one of me answer. Oh. This phone is getting in so mad now. And that was my son. Right, I'm going to put some music on so that you can listen to some music while I go downstairs. Come on. I'm trying to understand this. Right, I'm just going to go downstairs because my phone won't let me answer. So I'll be right back. Just tell me it's not mute. Jeez. Thank you. 
Hurry up, I'm back. Sorry. Uh, just had to go and let my son in. Um, once my son is left, we'll continue with the, with the live. So, I don't know why that music wasn't playing. I'm so sorry about that. Took long that one planned. Because my phone wouldn't let me answer his call. And whenever I tried phoning him back, it was engaged. Anyway, so thank you for sticking with me again here. So now we're going to watch this. Not all of it. I'm going to jump. Okay. But this you for everybody who's so, showing up to search thank you everybody who's putting on flyers even where they live every little piece helps i want my son's name and face plastered everywhere and if somebody out there is is watching this and you have my file he's mine i need you to just drop him off at an open gas station and tell him to go inside and tell him who he is and tell him to call 911 See, that, one, of the, one of the questions I was going to ask you later, but let's go ahead and get this one out of the way because it goes with what you're saying. Other than what you just said, is there any other message that you would like to convey to anyone uh, who might have information about Sebastian's whereabouts? Anything that you want to say to them at all outside of what you just said? Show up. They email me. There are, pe there, are, there are people on Facebook that for all these sites, send it to them. You know, there's there's Miss Terry Lynn. She has a podcast. She's she wants people to send her tips. If you're local and you have a tip, come by where we gather before we go out to search. Uh, I live in Clarksville. You know, you'll find me. My truck's pretty easy to 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 make. I mean, there are people. Even if you want to call where I work, call. And, and they probably won't like this, but call Davidson Sheriff's, Davidson County Sheriff's Department. Tell them that you have a tip. They'll get it to me. I'm pretty sure I've gotten a lot of support from Davidson County. Yeah, I'm positive they would get it to you. And, and at the same time, you know, if, if it comes up and you guys need to get a tip to somebody, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Pascal. You can reach out to anybody that has anything. For me, out of all the cases that we've talked about, this one really hits me hard because I am local. I live in Sumner County. It is very, very close for me. This is my community. Uh, um, the, you know, Sebastian is, is my neighbor. It, it, and even though you're in Clarksville, you are too. Although getting from here to Clarksville, there's not a straight shot. But, you That's know, good. this is. 
Do what? I said that's because of 24. Yeah, I know that's because of 24. They could make a, a thing, but they haven't. But that's <laughs> that's a different discussion on a different day. Um, like a bypass. But this is my community. And so what I want to say is they are out there searching every day. This is, you know, a lot of volunteers uh, have come forward. They still need things, which we'll talk about more. But if you are local, if you are in the Nashville area, you can devote some time. Um, you know, please, please, you know, come out and search, you know, drop off the supplies. They're do are they still doing uh, the supplies over by a volunteer drive? Um, no, we are at one. 127 River Road, uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee. It's over by the rudder, which is a restaurant okay. on okay. The, the water. Yeah, rudder's the south part of Hendersonville, guys. Pretty easy to find. So, if, if is that was it where they were searching that day where I met you out there where the building was? Okay, yes. so yeah, you go down like you're going to the rudder and you just don't quite go that far. And, and anyways, putting a GPS, but. They need supplies. What what do you need at this point from supply standpoint? Obviously, water, food, snacks. Um. Water is 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 great, but we need we need eyes. We need we need people. Um, we need people. We need people to come together as a community. This is a fifteen year old child that that doesn't deserve what has happened to him to have happened to him. Yeah. I agree with you. And he's a special needs child, um, which makes it that much, that much more. And so, yeah, if you guys are out, I know that we have, I look, I know that this live was posted in a lot of uh, Sebastian Rogers groups and a lot of local Hendersonville groups. If you are local, please find some time to come out and search. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a formal thing. You can come a little bit later. You can come a little bit earlier. You know, they are, you know, you can organize your own independent search. Uh, there are maps of where they've gone, you know, if you do live in the area, you know, and you have property. Because with Hendersonville, as you know, Madison, Goodlitzville, Gallatin, there are some people that have pretty large plots of land. If you have one with with anything on it from water to, you know, wells to caves to any places where he could hide or, or, or be stashed, um, please check. And, and like law enforcement said in the press conference yesterday, if you're afraid to go do it yourself, you don't want to do it by yourself, call them. They said that they will come out and help you search. So. That being said, you know, let's let's start here because this is about Sebastian, right? And we've had a lot of people ask a lot of things about Sebastian, but we don't know a lot about him. So if you don't mind, um, how would you describe him as a person, as your son? What of her what are some of his passions, some of his interests? Oh boy loves video games. Um, I think I think it's more like a, a close <laughs> toss-up between animals and video games. Uh, when it comes to animals, he loves cats. Like, the boy just loves cats. He loves cats. I mean... Like, if he sees a stray cat, he's he's have to walk up. Uh, why is it running for me, son? It's cat. Um, trying to explain that to him. It, you know, and not... I mean, my son got bit in the face by, by a dog. And he had to have seven stitches in his face. And he still isn't scared of dogs. I mean, he's not scared of anything. Except for, I guess, his stepfather. That's fair. That hurts. That hurts uh, what are hurts me. what are some of the memories, like your favorite memories that you have with him? What stands out uh, to you as a dad? I know that you have a great relationship with your son. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys like to do together? Well, I think one of the one of the favorite things that he likes to do with me is road trips. Me personally, I'm not a fan of road trips because he would <laughs> to drive. Okay, if he were to drive some, you know that'd be great. But I can't even get him to sit behind the wheel in the vehicle stationary. But he likes to go on road trips with me. He likes it when I take him to go. I mean, he. Born in Georgia, went to Kansas, why his mother was a great mistakes. And then she got stationed in San Diego. And so we drove to San Diego. And then she would leave on a deployment or a half a deployment, a third of a deployment. And we would leave the house. We'd pack everything that we were going to need into the car. And we would drive. We'd go see family. He has been coast to coast. We I mean, 
Boyle's roads to me are educational because never a road trip is never the same. Different things. And he loved it. He liked when Christmas came around for break. If I could go to a trip, we'd go to Texas to on his grandpa. You know, there's multiple different ways to get there. Missouri, home, stop friends on the way. That's what's fair to do with me is road trips. Because also at the at the end of road trips or in the middle of road trips, there's going to fish. Uh, when my when my mom and dad, his grandparents lived down in, in South Texas, we go down there and go fish in the Gulf of Mexico. Boy, love that. I mean, there was nothing like going on the boat to go fishing. You know, he got to see baby hammerhead sharks. One of the people caught one of those little little eleven inch hammerhead shark, and he was like, "Dad, it's a shark." And I'm like, <laughs> "It is. Can we keep it? No. Can we eat it? No, son. If for in order for it to be big enough to to eat, it, it'd be big enough to eat, eat you. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the jellyfish yeah. and stuff that were in the water. I mean, he's inquisitive. He's old." Always been inquisitive. He likes to he likes to ask the questions because he wants to know the answers. He wants to know more and more. And it's like I'm a wealth of, of information, son. You want to know things? Ask me. You know, I like sharing my knowledge with him. He's my mini me. What? 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 Did he have a favorite place that he liked to go when you guys road tripped? When I hear Seth talk about Sebastian, about him being so inquisitive, right? It's like my, it's like he's talking about my grandson. Because when he comes here, I've got two cats. One Toby and one Bobby. Toby has been with me from a baby, right? Now, Bobby is Toby's brother. And Bobby used to be what is Ellis's cat. But because Bobby kept attacking the mom, and I mean attacking her, going for her, biting out everything, to the point where she was having to go on antibiotics every week. She couldn't go from walking in the kitchen without the cat going for her. So I said, like, I'll have him here. That way, Ellis can still see the cat. Yeah, Bobby's been. Right here, took his time to settle in. But now he's settled in. God, don't I know it. Anyway, so when Ellis comes here, they, they can go up to Bobby, and Bobby's fine with them. He'll let them fuss him, let them kiss him, and all like that. Toby, no. Because Toby's always only ever had me here. So it's only ever been me and Toby. So when the kids are here, it's like, keep away from me. Don't come near me. And he hisses at them and everything. And Ellis doesn't understand why. So if we just want to give him some love, I said, sweetheart, Toby's not used to having children around him. Where Bobby grew up with you as a kitty, with you and Olivia around him. Toby's never had young children around him on a daily basis. Right, so and he's like, when we go out anywhere, if he sees anything, he wants to t pick it up, and it's so he's just too inquisitive, you know what I mean? And you have to be careful with what he's picking up. But I love him, he's got that. But when I hear Seth talk about Sebastian, that is how I would how I look at Ellis. He liked to go see his mom and uh, well, my mom and dad. I mean, he liked. It. So they have, Texas. yeah, he liked to have dogs. They have a little Boston pit, and he, you know, they like him. He liked them. He was so heartbreaking when, when one of them passed on. But 
you know, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed seeing family. He enjoyed the trip. He enjoyed the experience of it, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, you're wearing, I see, I, I, I'm wearing green, you can barely tell, but um, the shirt that you're wearing, can you show people that for a second? So this shirt right here, Sebastian, we can get similar to, I think it's someone similar to what you have on. Uh, scrolling down here at the bottom, uh, it's bonfire.com slash Sebastian dash Rogers. You can get one of those at the same time. Um, I put uh, Seth's cash app up here. You can see it too. So if you want to donate to the cause to help the searches, look guys, I'm going to tell you right now, this man has been out there every single day. He does not sleep. He does not eat. He is definitely not taking care of himself. Um, and searches are expensive. He's not working right now because he's taking the time off to find his son. So if anybody has anything, if everybody between all the platforms that are streaming this right now, went to that cash app and donated just a dollar, it would make a tremendous difference for him. Um, there was something that you said a little while ago, um, and you know, you know, that we talked about this before. I don't want to talk too much about your and his father. This is about you. This is about Sebastian and about you, because you're the one that's out there every day doing things. Um, but you had said that he was afraid of his of his stepdad. Is there to convey to you or talk to you about that you are able to talk about why he was afraid? And afterwards, I after son disappeared. Then he was scared. Of I mean, I, I've seen some of the podcasts where he has. Use the belt. I mean, you think about the the. If you, I've been to the school, I've talked to the principal. I've talked to his star, and everybody is wonderful. Kid. You know, he's always happy. Here. He always wants to make sure, as as the SRO told me, he saw him every day, and the SRO was like, it was the same thing. Sorry, I got kicked off again. Streamyard is so annoying. Right, I'll put the video back on again. Believe he's alive. I and I know you, you. Sorry, go ahead. Just needs to be found. He he needs to know that there are people in here, and I wish he would have told me. I wish he would have told me what was going on, because I wouldn't have let him go back there. He'd have been afraid of you because of what might have happened to him. Uh, you know, this is a man. You know, you know, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna table the comment I was about to make. Let me let me switch gears just a little bit, and, and I'm going to ask you a question. Um, and there's a reason. There's two reasons I'm asking you this question.
I'm not going to type on my comments. There's two reasons why I probably didn't sign your picture is done. One, he didn't, he wasn't sure, well, he knew what could happen if the toll didn't dad. He's new. He's probably been told, you if you tell your dad, then you're going to lose your mom, you're going to lose this, you're going to lose your home. You know what I mean? And I think another reason for him not saying anything to his dad is Sebastian gave unconditional love. Unconditional. Every child gives unconditional. They don't go, I love you if you do this. Like you hear some parents say to the child, I love you, but you know, but nothing. You love your child unconditionally, like that child loves you, right? And I think the reason he didn't say anything to his dad is because I don't think he wanted, because he did love his mum. He does love his mum. And I don't think he wanted any, anything bad to happen to his mum. If you know what I mean, if you know where I'm coming from. And it's something that we've talked about. So in a previous interview, not with you, it was asked what medications Sebastian was on. And I'm going to ask you that right now, not to be nosy, but so that people can know. And there's two parts to this question. What medications were was he on? And what does it mean if he does not have them right now? He was on some medication for impulse control for, for ADHD. He wasn't on anything for his autism. And uh, he had two different types of medication they was taking. And I want to say they just switched it. But I want to say it was like Guafa said or something that he was taking. And then he was taking another medication as well. And I I can't remember the name of that. And they just put him on Rispidonian or however you want to pronounce it. Try to get him to sleep at night. I didn't have a problem with him sleeping here. So I, I never really understood that. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but he just turned around and they they removed his his tonsils because he he had obstructive he had obstructive uh, uh, sleep apnea. So they were trying to you know they were trying to get him to quote unquote sleep. But I remember as an infant, my son and a newborn infant sleeps like 18 hours a day. My son slept maybe four hours. He's always been one that does not sleep. You know? You know? That gets... There's just... Medication doesn't always solve all the problems. Sometimes I think parents use medication against their kids because they just don't want to deal with it. I was, I literally, I only worked part time until my divorce because I spent most of my time taking care of Sebastian. He, he's not perfect. Nobody is. But that doesn't mean he's a horrible person. It doesn't mean he was a horrible child. Had him set with a routine. I could get him to take a shower, eat, take a shower, lay down in bed, and he'd fall asleep in about an hour at the most. And we're talking about at like five, six years old. It was all about a routine. And there's as soon as as soon as we got it, as soon as she did, as soon as she filed for a divorce, first thing she did was was take him to get get him medicated. 
now not only is the child going through a divorce, because the children suffer the most through a divorce. Because at some point in time, they're going to be asked to choose sides. And that is horrible to make a child choose between their mother and their father. I, I could never do that to my son. I was I was good with joint physical, joint legal custody because I believe that a child needs both his mother and his father. When she started putting him on medication after medication, you know, this isn't doing enough. This isn't this isn't doing what I'm wanting. He's not going to sleep. He's bouncing over. Well, take him out. Take him swimming. Take him to the park and let him play. He's he's a child. He, he's got to have a, a way to get rid of all this energy. You can't just, you know, go to work and then come home and expect him to, you know, do what you want him to do. He's got to have an outlet for this stuff. It's true. It's true. It's an outlet. Right? And if that child isn't going to go to the daytime and he's just sitting playing games, it's going to have all this energy built up. No, he's not going to sleep on the night time. He's not. Right? And I do think a lot of parents do rely heavily on medication for the child. Uh, but then again, there are parents out there who have got autistic children, whose children don't sleep, can't sleep. And yet they take them out and they do activities with them, but they're still very hyped, hyped up. But there's some parents who don't do anything with their children, don't take them out to the parks, don't take them out for swimming. You know what I mean? Like my son, when they've got a, when he's got a day off, right, in the week, and Ellis isn't at school, then they go out for the day somewhere to help him burn off some of his energy. And but when he's at home in the holidays, his mum will let him go out the back garden. Or it's, it's like a communal back garden. So she has to watch him because he can go from that, from that back garden through another door into another block and out there front door into the, onto the main, onto the road. So she can't let him go out there on his own, really, unless she's in the kitchen watching him out the window. Plus, not only that now, when he goes out there, his sister wants to go out there and she's three years old. So the mum has to go down now with them so the ideal thing for them is to get a house but they need a three bedroom house because ellis needs his own room because that's where he goes for his quiet time or time to just calm down you know what i mean and um and they need a garden which leads from the kitchen into the back garden with their own garden which is fenced off there's not shared with anyone else and you can't get into anyone else's block or anything like that and you can't get out to the main roads so well Ellis sleeps fine like when he's at home he's in a routine right and he's a, he goes to sleep but he doesn't sleep all he wakes up during the night and then he'll come into their bed <laughs> and sometimes he's going to get in their bed and Olivia's in their bed so he's jumped into Olivia's bed <laughs> and my son was saying the other week Ellis has come in right going to jump into Olivia's bed right and realised his dad was in Olivia's bed <laughs> because Olivia's got in their bed and oh, there's no room for three people in that bed not even a little three-year-old, right? So he's got into that bed, and Alyssa's come along to jump, pull the covers back to jump in her bed, right? And he's had to just get in that bed with your mum and your sister, right? 
But I find like now I've got bunks, it's really hard because he when he's here he likes to cozy into me. So I have to climb up on the top bunk, which isn't ideal for me because I don't like heights. Right? I mean I can tell you now within five, ten minutes I've been doing that, he's asleep. And that's the routine here at mine. He likes to cozy in with me. And he'll go to sleep. But then I get off his bunk and he doesn't wake up. And I go in my own bed. And then he'll get off his bunk, join the night, and climb into bed with me. I don't mind that. As long as he starts the night off in his own bed, I don't mind him coming into mine. But I've known him, like, Olivia's been here on a Saturday night, and I've known him, he was in, in my room one night, and I've gone in to check on him, he wasn't there. I've gone in to their room thinking, has he gone into his own bed without telling me? And he had, well, not his bed, but he climbed into bed with his sister. Right? I was lying there, right? And I thought, how cute was that? He said, I just wanted to cozy in with my sister. I said, okay. I said, but I'm going to bed now. Do you want to get in your own bed? And he said, can I get in your bed with you now? And so that night, I did let him come in my bed straight away. Anything so that he didn't wake Olivia up. Because if I'd said, no, let's get into your bed, he could come book, 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 book. And it could have woke Olivia up. But well, it's very good with his sister. He doesn't wake her up. He went likely every weekend I had his mum and dad stay here. So they was in my bed. Ellis was in his bunk. Olivia was in her bunk. And I'm on the sofa. I love my sofa. So comfy. Best night's sleep I can have is on my sofa. And I heard him getting out of the bunk. Getting off the bunk. And I'm in the living room, and I heard him in his bedroom. And he's come through to the living room, and he said, you didn't get in the bed with me, because I said I'd share the bed with him. But because he'd gone to sleep, I didn't want to wake him up. Plus, I didn't really want to sleep on the top bunk. So he got on the sofa with me. How have we done it? I don't know. But we both slept on the sofa then for about an hour or so before we had to get up. But when he's at home, he has his bath, gets his pyjamas on, and his mum will put the TV on for him. He'll put one of his programs on. Some nights he'll say, no TV, me tired. And he'll go to sleep straight away. Some nights he'll put the TV on, and he'll, he'll fall asleep watching the TV. But that's just his routine at home. And at here, he, he likes me to cover into him. So I have to cover into him. To get him to go to sleep. and within five minutes is asleep. He's groaning. Yeah. And medication isn't always, you know, he's... it was just an uphill struggle. The next so with medication i want to say this too with what you're talking about i get that my um i am very adhd and a lot of the medications that they can put you on for that will really just make you an absolute zombie yeah. your personality it, it kills it kills who they are as a person until they're off of it obviously um now it was report oh go ahead sorry what the rb is it with this snake and I'm putting the pictures up because I want people to be able to see. Yeah, look how happy he is with that snake. And what does his mom and dad, uh, stepdad do? Oh, yeah. Let me think about that. They took it off him and gave it away. Because he didn't clean it. As I've said, with an animal, with a child who's with autism, and ADHD as well. You have to have the time and patience to explain to them and show them 
right? Sit down with them while I'm cleaning it out and feeding them. You can't just say, well, there's your snake, there's the, cake, the cage, the tank. Don't forget to feed it, don't forget to clean it, and don't forget to put the water, because they don't understand that. They have to have a routine. So if they can make it a routine, say, I don't know. I'm going to say every Friday night because he used to go to his dad once every other weekend on a Friday. So say on a Monday night before his bath. Right. Let's, let's go in the room now and sit down and we'll clean this tank out together. And show him. And get him to do it, but you sit there with him. And if they're not doing it quite right, just say, don't forget you've got to get all those corners and everything. You know what I mean? Then show him how to feed the snake because you can't feed the, a snake frozen mice or rats. You have to defrost them. And my son, I don't know if he still does it now, he used to put them in hot water. Once those defrosted, he put them in a, a bowl of hot water, right? So then, as soon as he's done that, he put this mouse or whatever in the cage, and that hot water would heat that mouse up, so the snake would know where to find it, right? But if they're not showing him them things, he's not going to know. see what he looks like because the more pictures the better so if you see him somewhere you can recognize him you get a lot of different ones so um you know he's he's a cute kid he seems like a sweet kid and and you know no kid is is perfect right like none of them are but that's what you're there as a parent for is to help them you know get there and and, and grow into that that adult um the, I want to ask about the glasses. Uh, well, a couple things. One of them I'm going to clarify for anybody who's watching now. Uh, glasses were found during the search for him. And I think it's Sebastian, the way that Nina Gomez, her children were treated and she was treated. It's, it's oddly like, like it almost mirrors it exactly. And so respectfully what i'd like to ask you is there anything regarding those accusations that you would want to address i mean she filed for a divorce she accused me of uh, domestic violence against my son uh took several months i ended up when she filed uh for a divorce uh, me being the person i am i was like okay we'll grab a legal pad and let's go ahead and do a divorce We'll go ahead and split all the furniture and whatnot. What do you want? You know, obviously, things of that sort. And I was like, when it comes down to Sebastian, all I want is 50-50. He's my son. You're his mom. You know, so. And when that part came up, she went and got an attorney. And the next thing I know, I'm being issued a restraining order for domestic violence and a move out order so that i would no longer have a place to stay as well um i thought it initially i thought it was her that i was being accused of of being violent against um she told them that i had an arsenal they showed up with like 20 uh sheriffs and swat gear armed with assault rifles uh fully automatic in california they walked up i looked at the lady and i was like uh you're coming in here who who are y'all here for because i was outside with my son and he was playing with the neighbor's kid and we're sitting there you know drinking coffee shooting the shit watching our kids play when they rolled up and when they rolled up he looked at me he was like i wonder who they're here for this time and I was like, you know, one day they're going to be here for me because Katie's going to call them on me. And that was the time that they were there for me. They rolled up. The lady that was in charge, she she told me that why I was here, why they were there. And I was like, 
okay. I looked at her and I was like, you don't remember me, do you? And the lady looked at me. She was like, no. And I was like, I'm the father of the autistic special needs child. And she was like, oh, I remember you. And turned around and told all, all the deputies there that they needed to stand out with whatever was asked. And they were like, they stood down. There, there was no need for it, all that. Um, you know, that time I was, was before she did this, I was an armed security officer, worked in military housing. And they were like, we hear you have firearms inside. I was like, yeah, I have my pistol that I use when I'm at work. And then I have the other pistol that is used for work. Because work issues your own pistol. And then I had my own. And they're like, where are they? And I told them they were on my desk. And they were like, but you have my desk. I was like, they're on my desk. You can go get them. Uh, 30 minutes later, they and we're not with my desk, and, and I showed them the secret little pop so that they would drop down so you could actually get them. And they took those, and I still never got my firearms back because that's California. But that was it. So I was with this. I turned around. I was living in my car, trying to make ends meet, trying to make sure I had money to feed myself, which was, yeah, it was kind of hard to actually get employment because I didn't even have a residence or an address anymore. Dealing with the court issue, finally turned around and her attorney kept pushing and pushing and The judge at one point in time turned around told both me and Kitty that we need to be adults and remember that we're parents for Sebastian and told us to go in the hallway and do a parenting plan and dismissed everything. CPS had done their investigation. Finally, CPS never contacted me. One day I went by there just out of the whim. It was the last day. They were closing the case and they were informed me of them and trying to get a hold of me for the whole time and i was like well my number hasn't changed in years like 12. and they're like well nobody had your information and i was like well his mother did and she didn't even bother to give him that they turned around and they were like well we can't find any evidence of any abuse and so they submitted that to the court and the court dismissed everything So, one thing, hold on, let me try to get this better so we're, we're size. there we go. Um, one thing that I want to say to the people with this is, you know, oftentimes you, you want to, you want to make sure that you believe victims 98% of the time, uh, when they accuse somebody of something, but there are situations where you, you can tell that things aren't. Truthful. I, I will tell you that I, I have talked to, to Seth at length about some of this stuff, and I truly, and I would say this even if he wasn't here, believe him, um, because I think there's a couple of reasons why. So you can tell the way that he shares his story, and you can also tell in his actions, which is the fact that he is out there literally every single day. I hated when mothers use the child against the father right or even the father used the child against the mother it can work both ways and i hate it because at the end of the day i always remember a woman some is a mother i don't know who she was now and someone said to her Apparently, the, the father was a bit, bit of a deadbeat father. Um, he was always letting the child die, never turning up, and promising him this and never, and nothing coming of it. Anyway, so someone said to this mother one day, Why'd you put up with that? Right? Why don't you just stop 
stop him having any physical rights, any custody of the child, full stop. You know what mother said? I'd rather my child had had a father be a bad father, right? An irresponsible father than no father. Because she said, eventually my child will be old enough and they do, they get to an age, well, let's say it could be seven or eight. And I turn around and say, you know what, Mum? I'm fed your body. He's always letting us down. He's never there for us. I don't want to see him no more. And that's what she said. They will come to their own decision, their own mind, and make up their own decision. And when that time comes, that's when I'll go to court. But until then, unless anything bad really happens, I will continue to let the children see the father. If he doesn't turn up, he doesn't turn up. He's lost. He's lost. But she'd rather know a father than have no father at all. Uh, before we go, I'm just going to skip a little bit here, okay? Thirteen, and my son, you're you're a teenager. My son, I mean, taught him to be aware of your your surroundings is what I was teaching him. But I've also taught him that not everybody is your friend. And I had to do that. There was an incident in California. This is. A trigger warning coming out now. If you don't want to hear, um, if you're watching on replay, I'll put it back. I'll put the time as to when to leave and when to come back. Pardon, but this is trigger warning. Oh, John, let me just write the time down. It is that four fifty eight. Okay. Before, 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 Katie let Katie and Chris let a a child into their house that was five years older than my son. My son was seven or eight at the time, and this kid was thirteen. And she has a habit of not checking on her kid. I would never let some kid that's five years older than my son play with my my son anyways it's like why do you want to play with my son there's a five-year difference that's a pretty big difference you're 13 and my son you're you're a teenager my son is not a teenager he he's still playing with hot wheels and legos and you know he's building things he's playing video games and you're a teenager you go out and you have your own you know age appropriate group that you play with and they were letting this kid play with my son and they weren't checking on him and then this kid took my son's innocence and he molested him So you take your time. And there was nothing I could do in California because the kid was 13. But they let that happen. 
And they didn't bother to try to even get my son help until last year. Here, my son has just turned 15 in December. It means he's been dealing with an emotional, stressful, traumatic incident for the last seven years. And I, I've been trying to help him. I've been trying to get him help. <sighs> Going to talk to his doctor and telling them what happened. And for the doctor to tell me, she was like, I knew none of this stuff. And I'm like, really? Because he's supposed to be seeing a therapist for this. And she's like, well, the, he's not seeing the right type of therapist for this type of trauma. I care about my son. And I just, actions speak so much louder than words. And there's just no justification for the actions that I have seen from them. They're not parents. They're not parents at all. And I want to know what happened to my son. You deserve to know what happened to your son. Every, every bit. And I'm sorry, I, I don't think any of us were aware of, of that. And I'm so sorry that, number one, that he went through that. And, and two, that as a parent, you know, well, you're going through a parent's worst nightmare, but that's like the I'm second worst nightmare. My son around his daughter, because Chris has turned around into my mother, told my mom, your grandson's a pedophile. No, he's not. He's a victim that has the help that he deserves and that he needs so that he can get over the traumatic incident that has happened to him. That should have never happened underneath their watch to begin with. That's why Chris doesn't want my son around his daughter. Because he's scared that my son is going to do the same thing that was done to him under his watch. And Chris Proudfoot, if you're listening to this, you can't hold that over my head. I told you. You're going to piss me the fuck off, and I don't give a fuck who knows. It's your fault. It's you and your wife's fault. You guys don't deserve to be around kids. You know, um, we, I don't know if you listen to it, but I know that you, you're aware of, of of Nina Gomez's video. And, and I'm going to say this based on what I've heard and, and having dealt. So my, my account started off as toxic and narcissistic behavior because of the type of parent that I had. Um, he doesn't even want his own daughter. It's what I heard. And it's just all about control. And it's about control with Sebastian. That was pretty clear because as... I had a lot of step parents more than I want to admit. And most of them would have never disciplined me without talking to the, you know, to a biological parent. They sure as hell wouldn't have hit me. So it's it's for him, I think it it really is control. And maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but I'm kind of like, I'm with you at this point, kind of like, you know, fuck it. Because everything that has come out, every word that has come out of his mouth, he double talks, he talks out of both sides of his mouth. He can't keep his story straight in one single interview. So I'm I'm fully with you. And I feel that most people who have seen this going down, have seen everything that's happened watching it because this case has become incredibly public, um, are on your side with us. And we all feel the same way about them. Because way... We knew, but I knew from the beginning, like, whenever he did an interview, Seth did an interview, he never said anything bad about Katie. Why? Never. Never put her down. Because in his eyes then, 
Katie was Sebast is Sebastian's mother. And he's not going to put the mother out of his child down. But I knew, and others said it as well, he's holding back. He knows more than what he's saying. And God, he let it go. And good on you, Seth. Good on you. About time someone put it out there and let them know what sort of person that CP is. From that interview, his ex-wife job. Some might say, oh, she's just uh, trying to get uh, revenge back on him because he's going for custody. She's not. She's trying to keep her child safe from him. She has seen him hit her other daughter. Right? It's, she's seen it. She's seen the, his anger getting worse and worse with the kids. And that's why she left like she did. And when he goes on, when he says that time, like, oh, well, she slapped me because of, she was accusing me of having, having an affair and I wasn't. Uh, yes, she was. Yes, she was. He was having an affair. CP was having an affair with KP. Yeah. So they hadn't even obsessed. Uh, and Katie hadn't even got their divorce through. And Katie was seeing Chris. He said Sebastian's been Sebastian has been in C Chris's life a long time. Before our he said it himself, he said even before our divorce came through. So he said it there, Seth did. So Katie seen Chris even before their divorce came through. And Chris was with Nina and seeing Katie. So they're both as bad as each other, CP and KP, they're perfect match for each other. And I hope they go away and live happily ever after. Once we find Sebastian. Anyway, you know what? I'm just going to say it. You're out there every day looking. I've said that a million times. And the only reason you're not out looking for your kid is you're not looking for something that's lost is because it's not lost to you. You know right where it is. You know right where he is. And that's why, in my opinion, I think I told you that too on the phone. So every day you're out there busting your ass. And I'm going to tell you, he hurt himself. Yeah, so look, when you look, see the way he stands and stuff like that, this man is in pain. Like he's got the massager right now. I don't think there's better timing for me to bring this up. This man is constantly in pain. He doesn't sleep. He maybe gets 30 minutes to an hour a night tirelessly. While the others were literally, I'm just going to say this because I'm pissed off too. Because again, like I said, this is my community. Okay. They were at the Cracker Barrel five minutes from my house on Easter and then they left town again they haven't been seen and I just don't understand that the last time you saw shit like that was with Chris and Roberta Laundry. so I'm just saying I want to kind of go on to something a little bit different because I, I know that this is taking a massive emotional toll on you so um, going to the search can you take us back to the moment leading up to Sebastian's disappearance and what was happening during your lives at that time, um, which led him to what you, whatever you believe, whatever you know, whatever you're able to share, you know, what was going on at that time to, for him to disappear? I talked to him on Thursday. Everything seemed to be normal. I mean, Sorry, I'm just, it hurts. I know, it's okay. 
I know. I know you're hurt emotionally and physically at this point. And if you don't want to answer anything, if something's getting too much for you, you don't have to. You well, don't I, have to answer it. I'm just trying to focus so I can so I can answer the questions. That's all. Pain is a is an overwhelming distraction at times. Sebastian was going to school. Whole point of him finishing his first year was he was supposed to come live with me. We were supposed to do a swap where she would have him every other weekend and he would be living with me, going to school. And if she wanted him on his breaks, then she would be able to have him on the breaks. If not, then he would stay with me. I mean, I I wanted full custody of my son since the divorce. But I I didn't it's I don't believe it's my right to take a child's mother away. You know, that's something that the child would debate or would decide at a later point in time. Only thing I wanted to do was protect him and Respectfully, not every not every person who is a mother is a good mother or deserves to be. Makes me feel like shit. You didn't do anything wrong. You're still not doing anything wrong. Should have done things different. Would have been in that situation. I know that me saying this isn't going to help you from beating yourself up. You're going to do that regardless. But look at the situation that you've been dealing with. It's not, you know, you you're going up against two people who are constantly battling you in every bit with every bit with your son. It's the same thing that Nina was talking about. They battle every step of the way because it's about control. It has nothing to do with love of, of the children. It has to do with control. That That's what it is. So you, how do I put it? Yes, you married her. Yes, you've been having this co-parenting situation for a long time. I have talked to you enough and I've seen you talk in other interviews enough to know that you are not like that and when you have somebody who is not like that it's hard sometimes to grasp the full spectrum of what you're really dealing with and so you you can sit there and beat yourself up and say i could have done this i should have done this but you don't know what you don't know and i don't think you i don't think you truly know what you're dealing with or have been dealing with just makes me look for a partner it just makes me want to find it even faster. One second, the people that lived there did not know where people's cameras were at. They know. And Again, you don't have to say anything to what I'm going to say, but I find it odd that she works for ADT and uh, and there's no security. She works for home security. For bro, oh, Brinks. Okay, somebody said AG. I thought it was Brinks, but okay, Brinks. But so same thing though. You work for them, you get free security systems or at least discounted. So I find that I just have found that very. I'll just say odd, is what I'll say. Unusual, um, weird. Unusual. Yeah, it's it's strange. So you for a month have, you probably know every inch about Hind of Hendersonville about now and some other areas, Natchez Trace Park, Goodlettsville, Madison, Gallatin, probably Clarksville. And that being said, can you walk us through uh, the efforts that you've made in your One hundred percent. When I call you up and I ask if I could go on your property, I'm not accusing you. 
I'm just asking because this is private property. It's yours. And the only thing I can do is ask you if it's okay if I come on it to search for my son. And I appreciate those that say yes. Those that say no, it's your prerogative to say no, but why would you try to stop me from finding my son? You know, I'm not asking you let me search this on my own. You can walk with me. You can come with me. Help me find my son. That has been my plea the whole time. I need people to come help me find my son. Heads up, eyes open. He could be around the next corner. So I know that we've we've talked about this toward the beginning of this. For people who are local, who want to come help, who want to come bring eyes to this with you, That way, he, when he walks into my house, he knows that he's back in his sanctuary. So, I'm going to ask you kind of a tough question, and again, you don't have to answer because I know I know this is taking an emotional toll on you, and I know this question is going to be kind of like that. There's the reason I'm asking it is I think that. One thing that I have to remind people when you when you when you're looking at true crime, current events, things like that, that that this is not entertainment. This is somebody's life. This is somebody's family. This is somebody's Please, child. That's true. And, and I sometimes feel that, that that can get lost in the shuffle. So to whatever you're comfortable doing, saying, how have you been coping with the emotional toll of his disappearance? How has it affected your life, your routine? Um, I know you told me a story about your house. I don't have when my life was a was at every other weekend or a summer break or a spring break or, or a fall break. That's when. And I dropped my son off at his mother's house. Then I would just work again when I picked my following. I I was like, I will work twelve days in a row, but you have to give me my weekend, my every other weekend off. Don't call me to work. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's it. My life will revolve around my son. And since my son has gone missing, my life is having because my life is missing. I'm told to clean my house. Uh, I kick. Clean up my living room because there's magic cards all over my table. When he comes in, it will be the same way like he hasn't left. In my house in a sanctuary. Routine? I don't have a routine. Let's just try to sleep every once in a while. We drive in and I just pull over because I get so tired I can't even focus on the road. I just pull over. Give me like 30 minutes worth of sleep and then hit the road again. There is no stop. There is no downtime. There's nothing. 
there's nothing but the goal of finding Sebastian. Regarding um, the search and, and, and efforts and ongoing, is there anything else regarding that that you'd like to share with the people that are listening or anything else in general you want to share with the people that are listening? Not really. I mean, I'm giving this all I got I know. until there's nothing left to give. And then I'll give some more. I'll find more to give. So, like I said, as you can see, this this man needs help. He needs help. So, again, if you. To the person or person, if you're watching this or you come across this YouTube video, you are pure evil. Because you must, must watch every video every line every interview that seth does i have and each interview he does you can see him breaking down more and more and more If you know where he is, for heaven's sake, as you said, drop him off at a petrol station, tell him to go inside and tell him to tell, tell him to tell him his name and to phone 911. Drop him off at a hospital and tell him to go inside and tell them. Anywhere. Where he can phone 911, just drop him off there. Or if you know where he is, then for Christ's sake, just tell someone. You can phone in anonymously. You don't even have to give your name. Just tell us, tell them where Sebastian, Wayne, Drake, Rogers is. Because like I said in one of my lives before, if it comes to the point where the police have to do the hard work, which they are, and they do find Sebastian alive, and Sebastian tells them everything, because he will, he'll tell his dad. He doesn't tell the police, he'll tell his dad. Or if you harmed him in any way, then God help you. If you are local, I know that there are a lot of local people watching this. I know that this was shared in the groups. I've said this a couple of times. Please go out and search, even if you can only do it for an hour, 30 minutes, whatever. If you can't, the cash app scrolling across the bottom of this. Um, the TMB Fleming, that's, that is Seth's friend who is managing this stuff for him. Because when I tell you all this man does is search for his kid, that is literally all he does. That's all he does. He might get 30 minutes of sleep every now and then he eats enough to kind of keep going on. Um, so he has people that are helping him with this. And like I said, searching can be can be expensive um so so please do help and if you can't help with your eyes help monetarily help you know area, even if you aren't in the area shit you know like you said you can go to the tbi's website download sebastian's flyer um you can plaster all over your social media because optics are everything in, in cases like this um there's a couple of questions in the chat that I, i've gotten a lot that i want to ask and again you can answer whatever you don't want to answer uh, but a lot of questions and i know that this is going to come up in the day we've been so that's why i'm asking in regard to the closing to texas do you know if please have it do you know if they're accounting or anything like I, that or you, you say i don't have no idea 
I mean, we're talking about, I was in that house for, for on and off for three days before it became a hostile situation. But I didn't see that, you know, this roadhouse for, for a month. So I can't even tell you if what clothes were there would be something that the investigators would have to actually look for. I know people asked and I wanted to make sure that, you know, they heard of you. So the goal of this is to make sure that we close around it because really when you're searching buddy, you want to and All right, folks. Wow. More questions? And more questions. And I haven't shared everything that I know. But the no, investment... I know you can't share everything you know. You can't. I can't. Because some of that stuff that I know that have been through leads that I've gotten, I want to share. But Sebastian deserves justice, not vengeance. My son's going to have justice, and we're going to find him alive. Because if you've hurt my son, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, I wouldn't want to cross you either in that way. Um, there's a couple things that, that I wanted to make sure that we brought up before we closed out to um, I'm going to put this here first. So if you want to add, I'm going to stop scrolling for just a moment here on the bottom. But if you, you want to add to Sebastian's reward, fund, what's the reward up to currently, Seth? Absolutely. You know? Don't don't add anything to it currently. Because you don't I, add anything to it. No, I've got some information and I need to I need to go down there and have a talk with that gentleman. Okay. So. What would I give to be a fly on that wall when he goes down there to have a talk to that gentleman? Hmm. What would I give? Anyway. There's not much more after that. But I did say I wanted, but I can do that tomorrow because this has been going on now for nearly three hours. So. Oh, never mind, don't do that. Uh, thank you for sharing that. The other thing that I want to make sure that I share with y'all, and I, I know this has been scrolling at the bottom as well. If you'd like to go, is it, let me see, yeah, there we go. If you'd like to go purchase this, you can go to bonfire.com slash Sebastian hyphen Rogers. Um, this makes you a walking billboard for him. You can get it in all different colors. It's only $35, which I can tell you it's print on demand. And for, for print on demand, that is cheap. You can get it in a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, a hoodie, women's slimming. There's all sorts of different options that you have, all sorts of different sizes. Uh, and do any the, the proceeds for this, does this any of this go towards, towards you once you get it um, or towards the search? It was supposed you know to. I haven't seen anything from it. Okay. Well, you, you can know, get it on your own then. And yeah, it's a walking I, billboard at least. Yeah, there, there's actually on the Facebook page, there's a lady up here in Clarksville. I think she's charging like $25 for a shirt. Um, I can get that information and give it to you. 
Yeah, if you get that, I'll I'll happily post that. And you know, we can do that. I mean, I'd rather it stay in the community, if not in the community, at least in my community. You know, if not Sumner County, then at least in Clarksville, in Montgomery County, because she has a job. And if we can bring income to her job, then it's, they, you know, it stays instead of sending. That says a lot about that company, doesn't it? You know what I mean? The amount of people, are, are, I should imagine, is gone and ordered off that site. To have a t-shirt or a sweatshirt and not, not one little bit has come towards funding the search so i can see his point and the site the uh, facebook page i think they are on about is on i can pull it up let me pull it up Is oh no, I am my pack. This would probably be the page is on about the Facebook page is on about, right? So check that Facebook page out. right and because you learn a lot of information and it's trusted people it's not just hearsay from oh i heard people put comments up right posts up like one did put a post up i heard from a friend of a neighbor right no that's third hand we don't want third hand information so but there is a lot of information that comes up on that site. Updated information. Because the admin, there's a few a couple of admins I know who are YouTubers, are good YouTubers. Right? So it's a good site to go on. I go on there and get a lot of info. This is the site where I found out about this YouTube video. <clears throat> and they only showed a small clip of it. And I, I got a comment going, oh my God, where was this live done? I'd love to see, I need to see the whole lot. So the woman sent me the link to um, I got that one, to Justin on TikTok. So, but he said he he's gave his warning out, mm. right? Beware, he's gave his warning out. He's not playing games no more. Death is not playing their games no more. Mm. Right, someone's face to me. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, nothing of importance, so let's go back. Let's come back to here. But, oh God, I'll get me. Just get me to that. God, if I could just get back to the station. Just get me to that. Right. Um, so, yeah, please. If you want to join the Facebook page to be kept up to date, this is the one. The reason of the one, right, which you're probably aware of, is to find, let me, find Sebastian Rogers' case discussion, right? Yeah. Um, you know they say, Lock your doors to keep the monsters out. That didn't apply to Sebastian because the monster or monsters 
were already inside the house. And it's the same for a lot of children. The monster or monsters are already inside their home. And I just wish, I really do wish he'd just spoken to his dad. You know what I mean? But I'll show you that other video with the mother with that little smirk she gives and the smirk that he gives. And I'll do that tomorrow night because, as I said, it's three hours now. And I've got to get to bed and it'll take me about an hour to sort all this out. Okay? So, thank you for being with me. If you're watching on replay, please give me a like, hit the bell, subscribe to be kept up to date with all future lives videos i do go live every night at 8 p.m uk time to take five or six hours off your time you'll get the, you'll get the back right time right so um normally rang back three or three or three or four wherever you are in the usa Anyway, so please, thank you for being here with me tonight. This has been a long one, but I wanted to show that last video because he's just come to his end, the end of his tether now with him. I think, I think what's doing it for him as well, it's not just hearing them talk on their lives and hearing what they've done to that poor lad. And they treated him. Um, and I think it's all oh, shut up, girl. It is more the fact that once again they've upped and left the house. They've upped and left the house. The house, they say, the door will always be open for you, Sebastian, to walk through. It's not, the door is firmly closed and bolted because they bolted down to Mississippi. And as for the police, I think the police have just gone for a, to find more proof. They need the body, they need Sebastian. So that's why we need searches out there. We need, if you can get out there, if you're local, to Hendersonville, Tennessee, anywhere like that. As you said, as you've heard, he's had volunteers come from Florida, all over the place, coming up to help. So if you can and you have the time, please go and help. He needs your help. This man is breaking. He needs more help. He's got volunteers, but he needs a lot more. It's a big, big area he's trying to cover. Right? So, as that YouTube guy said, then he said, even if there's only 10 volunteers, that's who did an hour a day. That's 10 hours of searching. 10 hours of looking. So, you imagine if they've got 30 volunteers. Just doing one hour a day. 30 hours altogether, they've looked between them. Between all of them, that would be 30 hours. But just think how much ground they could cover as well. They could go off in groups of 10. That's three different areas they're covering. So please, if you're from Tennessee, Clarksville, Anywhere around there, if you've got the time and you can go, please go down. Yes, you do have to show your ID and sign in with your name, but that's just for a head count. You know what I mean? So that 10 people go out, 10 people come back. 
okay? So please, for Seth, for Seth Rogers, the father of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, please find in your heart, go and look, go and help. I would, but I'm in the UK. So all I can do is report back on my live and keep you updated. For those who can't get out there and help, this is our way of keeping you all updated. I'm not the only YouTuber. I've been covering this from literally the first day. I found out he went missing on the Monday. I heard about him on the Tuesday night, and on the Wednesday I went live. So within three days, I've been going, by the third day I've been being missing, I was doing a live. They still had all the searches going on. Everything. The parents, the mother and stepfather hadn't even done their first interview then. So, and they're doing like the vigils on a Friday night and things like that. And the mother and stepfather never went to one of them. In fact, they don't not think to help this child. Why is that? Because someone, if you, if it was my son or my child, I don't care what the TBI said or the sheriff said, you try stopping me from getting out there and looking for my son. Just try stopping me. You'd have to handcuff me and lock me up in prison to stop me. That's the only way they would stop me from getting out there looking. Right? I understand there could be uh, like a conflict. Is a conflict. Like they don't want, they don't really want the parents out there looking in case they do find the child. Because as Seth said, if he comes across the bastion and he sees him and he calls him, it's going to be very hard for him not to just run up to him and grab him and hug him and hold on to him tight. But you see, that is something they can't have him do. He can't touch his son. They need him. His clothing, his, his body, his clothing, his evidence. But it'd be so hard for Seth not to do that. And it'd be so hard for Sebastian not to understand why he wouldn't be able to hug his father. You know what I mean? But that's why they don't like parents going out there. But sod that. You know what I mean? Sod that. I'd be out there. I'd be out there every day, hitting every lamppost, every shop, every restaurant, every cafe, every takeaway place that does deliveries. Hand these out to your delivery guys so that every time they take a pizza out to someone's house, put this with the pizza box. You know what I mean? Put one with the pizza boxes. Or the Chinese, or whatever it is they have on takeout. Or chicken meals and things like that. I don't know what they have in the USA. But putting them out on the um, deliveries. That's another way of getting the posters, the flyers out there. Walk along them. Flap one on every car you saw on the windscreen. Because I know if it was my song, every car where I live would be slapped with, uh, with a flyer. And if, out where I live, in the car parks, every car would have a flyer put on them. I'd go out every night, when all the cars were all set up in front of me, I'd go out and put one on their windscreen every night. And as I went to the shops, I'd be putting them on the car then. I'd be going into all the shops, all the takeouts, all the hairdressers, the park, 
you know what I mean? Everywhere. But they're not even doing that. Yes, Chris has had to go back to work. I understand that. He hasn't gone back to work. So why can't she go out and put flyers out? It wouldn't surprise me if it's someone of Chris's family going round and taking the flyers down. It wouldn't surprise me if it's his mum and his stepdad going around in the car. Oh, there's a fly there, let's grab that one. And, and taking them down. Because someone is really hindering the search for Sebastian. And when we find that someone, when they find who it is, they will find Sebastian. That's what I think. While looking for Sebastian, we also need they also need to find out who is taking these flyers down. Who is trying to stop them from finding Sebastian? Find that person or those people and you will find Sebastian. Anyway, I'm setting you up my throat, it's getting a bit hoarse. So please, once again, share some of these shows, show me some love, give me a like, ring the bell, subscribe. Be kept up with daily with all future lives. Until further notice, until tomorrow, I should say until further notice, until tomorrow, I say good night and thank you all again for being here. Good night. Mm.